So here's the game editor program, game editor, and the last update to the program was, I believe, 2010. So let's just uh, go into to the test mode and see what it looks like. That was the uh, test test play when I actually export out the the full game. It's a little more responsive, but that was pretty good for within the program itself. So what you have here are pretty much all the setups of how I had to put everything together. So with this. You can see there are different green boxes everywhere. These are the the regions and the way you create those. Just to give you a general idea of how Game Editor works is you go in a wireframe region and then you give it a name, whatever you want to call it, and then you press add and then you got that box you could change the size of it, however small or big you want, the box to be. You could change the the depth, although it's more obvious over here if you go here with it. You could change the depth there and you can see how it goes behind stuff. But if you don't want to work with a box, then you could just always uh, delete it and then add a uh, regular character under normal and then you got this icon over here of Pac-Man in the game editor program and what you could do 
is move it around and then assign it all this stuff that you see here so this is just a, a basic thing so let's say you wanted to add animation you go into here and then you access your files you could say multiple if it's going to have more than one frame or a single if it's just a single object frame and then you click on it and pick the one you want and then it loads up just like all this stuff so that's really cool and easy to get the hang of and then let's say uh, over here this character here if you wanted to edit it this animation you just go into edit you could change the speed down to four frames a second or you go up to 13 or back up to 30 currently I think 30 is the limit although correction you could go up even faster than that see that that's pretty good even though 30 is the the default limit you could make it as fast as you want it so that's a cool thing I just discovered while showing this uh, brief demo so the next thing I wanted to show is how all this stuff works this is this character here this image here see why I have Z depth there because if it was here he'd be in front of the lady but back here he would disappear over here behind the buildings so you want to have it at the right setting and the reason this is receive if out of vision is because here's the view right here this is known as the view this is your configuration is 1280 by 720 you could change it or type in your own custom setting here but that's the general idea of game editor and then if you want your character to see this was a default this is going to actually going to be uh Sarah here and Fred here and Max here but I didn't program the in yet I'm working on Max right now I'll show you what I have here so you could zoom in really close if you want or zoom out back to the default that's just within the window and the program itself sadly once it's exported you can't change the size of the window since it was uh, updated probably about four years ago so I'm working with an old program here but here are all the different features of the the character to give them all these abilities that you saw so let's say uh, he bumped into a zombie right so then I had to program let's say uh, so let's say he bumped into the right side of the zombie do I want to repeat that? If I press yes, that means every time he's contacting that zombie, he's going to lose health. So I set it to no. Here are all the, the different moves he has that I had to set variables for. And variables, so let's say you had hit slide. This is saying if hit slide is not on, is off that's what equals equals means so then if we go into variables you can see all the variables that I set and then hit slides right there and then you could go edit it and set it up any way you want but then so let's say if the height is this and that when he contacts the enemy then all these variables if they're off and he's not doing anything he's just standing there then what will happen is the player's health will go down minus one and then the player will go into a hurt animation and the player will make a hurt sound and then the path the player will be uh, bumped to the right he'll go on a path 
and paths are over here I'll show you in just a second and then this I had to put in there just to make sure it would fall through on that path because if I didn't have that in there sometimes it would get stuck or not even perform the path so this is like a backup variable and then this is a backup too I had to create a timer so if he got stuck in the path this thing would ensure that he didn't stay stuck now this is if his health is under one that means he's technically lost a life so then you create the the animation for that actually that's a separate character I put in there and then the visibility state of the player becomes invisible only because I want that player to still be alive so I'm not going to destroy that player just going to take away uh, one of his one of his lives for the the player. He has three lives, so then you take take one away if he he loses to the zombies. So here's some more stuff and code, and you can see how complex all this can get. But getting back to the path, you you go under path. And then you could pick all these paths that I created. Let's say you wanted to add a path. You would go under path. <laughs> path A. And then you could say, well, 30 frames per second. And then you would draw a path. And you could go any way you want with it. And then if you want to lock it back to the original you just shift and then it locks back and then you could close it but anyway here I'll show you I have uh, these uh, being prepared to be programmed in so here's max over here and then these uh, using one of his attack moves Rather than reprogram all of this back in, in other words, in other words, I'm using the player of all these different characters. If I had to recreate a second player just to create Max, it would be a, all of this stuff I had to reprogram in and then go from scratch and so on so it's a lot of work and you can see how detailed all this stuff can get and the draw actor draw actor is pretty useful it's it overrides a lot of stuff and then the key down is an easy way to enter commands so like when you press spacebar all this stuff happens and this is C the C language which to be honest I don't know a whole lot about but I just know what works and what doesn't so I have limited programming skill but you can see how far I've gotten programming the game and that's from a lot of uh, tutorials and of course, advice on the game editor uh, website. They really help out a lot. So then, let's move on to finishing this uh, this up here, and just showing you. Uh, here's the uh, the opening level. The challenge I had here was once I transported the character here these zombies weren't forming here or here so I had to play around with it for about five hours just trying to figure out why that wasn't working so then here's the map and you could scroll across and all this stuff the parallax scrolling you had to do a lot of fancy stuff with to get it to work but anyway that's the idea